Hi everyone and welcome back to my bench. Today I'm going to show you how you can build your own DIY devices without writing any code and how you can also control them through the cloud. If you saw my previous video for the pellet level sensor that I did with the Arduino cloud, I'll link it up here. Uh, on top. One of the complaints that I made in that video was that using Arduino Cloud didn't give me an easy way to display the data and make a control interface. It still works through their application, but it wasn't as easy as I thought and the whole process was a bit uh, tricky. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the KME Smart Platform to create your own custom smart devices and have them controlled via mobile using the KME Smart application. KME Smart is a relatively new platform that just recently learned about and it seems to be already providing support for quite a lot of devices. What's interesting about them is that they have a little bit of a different approach compared to the other platforms that I've seen where in order for you to program a device, you are actually downloading a Windows application that you can then add config to, and you can then use the built-in serial communication to connect to your devices. I currently have my device connected to the computer, so I'm gonna connect to the module. I need to select the port that I'm at and connect. We can then continue to upload the basic firmware, or in the case with my example, I can already load a file that I had pre-created where I used it to connect and control this relay. Now here the project itself consists of a relay similar to my example with the Bluetooth control. You can check that video up here in the corner. But in this example, I also added a push button that can manually trigger the uh, relay. So I can choose to turn it on or choose to turn it off and also I added a status LED separated from the LED that we have on the relay. Since this is a 5 volt relay and the node MCU is being powered by 3.3 volt, I'm powering the relay by from 5 volts and I'm using a 2N2222 transistor to act as a switch with 10K resistors to the base and to the VCC on the collector and the emitter is connected to directly to ground so when the transistor is turned on that pulls the in pin from the relay low and that turns on the relay the KME smart platform comes with its own application that we can turn on uh, i currently have this device added on so i can choose it to control the relay so you saw pressing there on the button will control the relay we can go in and specify a different type of icons and settings for the device as well as adding timers that's something interesting and what i particularly like about the entire platform is the ability to add automations here on the example i do have a one automation that it's automatic and this one if we go to check the details when all of the conditions are met, when the irrigation timer is turned on, I use this as an example that would in theory control a valve that uh, would turn on our irrigation. After 20 seconds, I made an automation that would trigger the relay to go off and we can try that. So if I power on the relay, so I did manually power it on, I'm going to close uh here you can see we have a reflection of the status that it's already powered on when the 20 seconds pass the relay should uh, automatically turn off and we can control that uh, both from the LEDs and it did so without any complicated system we now have a device that we can control in very different conditions. I already have a similar system where I'm using a valve like this to control my irrigation in my home, in my backyard, but that entirely works with Home Assistant and the entire system is dependent on Home Assistant. However, with the KME Smart, I was able very quickly to replicate the whole setup and have it controlled through an application without having to have Home Assistant or any other system running 
on my home. Yes, this is controlled through the cloud, so it will be dependent on Wi-Fi. I'm not really sure how the local control works. If, for example, the device is disconnected from the internet, if it's gonna check any of the automations, maybe that's something we can try in a later example, but I wanted to show you how you can use it to start creating your own devices. Now, let's jump to the configuration program and show you how I implemented the relay control. So within the KME Smart, once you have the device and you've uploaded the firmware for the first time, then you can start adding your integration. And as I told you before, there are a lot of options. So you can have DHT, temperature and humidity sensor. You can have a contact sensor or what's, uh, how do they call it, alarm sensor. Uh, you could have a relay and that's exactly what they have. We can have dimmer, which is uh, like PWM, infrared, uh, latching switch, ER hub, Wi-Fi, LED, pairing button, analog sensor, fan, serial sensor, DS18B20, which is a temperature sensor, and also you could connect a device through serial. On the relay configuration, if we go into the details, we are able to set if that relay is triggered high or low. In my case, because I'm doing like an inverse with the transistor, it's being triggered active high. It's connected to pin five, which is D1 on the uh, node MCU. I also have a defined input, which is for the push button that I have that also control the relay. That push button is connected to ground to pin D7 or pin 13 in this case. And because it's connected to ground, I'm using active low to detect as being triggered. So it's a push button. We can have it a switch. And the final option that we can have here is the LED settings. We can have a certain pin that we can set from within the menu, which one we want to be. This one is uh, D6, so pin 12 that is uh, controlling the LED and the LED is connected between D6 and ground uh, with a 1K resistor. When you're defining your device, you are not just limited to adding one type of sensor or a control. We can have also multiple things. So we can choose to add multiple items to our device and that would create a more complicated uh, device. Let's close this. So for example, we can have on a different pin testing to see if we have a certain contact or not, or if we want to control an RGB light. Again, we can remove this. I'm not sure why this one is uh, lacking this so it might be a special case but the application also has the ability to save a so-called KME file and also load a KME file from when you had it uh, saved before so let's try and load I'm gonna reload yeah so I'm, I loaded the same KME that I had from before I'm and I'm back to the configuration that I had for my device from previously from the example. If we go again to the Kimi Smart website, we can see that they do have a whole section of smart devices where they list some of their own devices. Although I was not able to find where they actually sell them, but they seem to have uh, like an infrared remote, different type of wall switches, that are all compatible and working with the platform. So there seems to be a lot of devices with different specifications and different model numbers. So that's something that could be interesting to check. These look like a lot of the switches that you can get from the traditional online suppliers. They have some power switches, screens, bulbs, and other sensors. Also on the website, you have all the information about the application and the different features that you can add for each of the sensors, as well as connecting it with Alexa and Google Home. Apparently there is an integration that allows you to connect any of the devices that you have on KME Smart to work with both Google Home and Alexa as well as IFTT. Now I already have this device connected to my phone, but 
I'm gonna go ahead and remove the device from the application. So this is the blank uh, and also let me remove the automation that I have. So remove, yes. If you go through the process of creating the device and uploading the firmware, you will need to go to the application and complete the pairing process that is being triggered by the flash button on the device itself. So I'm gonna press that for two seconds. The LED on top should start blinking, as you can see it. And then we can go to plus and add a device that will trigger the screen that will ask for our Wi-Fi that we can connect. Hold on, I'm gonna take this a bit further up so we can connect and we choose to do it with a smart connect where the LED is blinking every one second or this can also be within a, like an access point so I'm gonna choose that I'm gonna choose to pair a single device and that already recognized as one socket I can choose to add it and name it as example and here I got the device it recognized that within the config I had this named as irrigation so now we again have control and we have the device connected to our account so far both the device and the application uh, were connected to the same Wi-Fi network and you need to be on the same Wi-Fi network to be able to Add the devices to the application but once you have them added I now disabled Wi-Fi and I'm connected to 5G on the phone I'm gonna open the application once again and I should again see the control now if I click I'm still able to connect the device even though I'm not on the same Wi-Fi so that means that we're connecting them through the cloud and I can then control those devices that I have set on the application from anywhere in the world. This is particularly interesting if we actually do an irrigation controller. So for example, when a specific time is hit, so when a specific schedule is hit, the irrigation could turn on. And also we can add another automation as we had before. We can have the irrigation on for about half an hour and then it's gonna automatically turn off to prevent overwatering of the plants. Or if you maybe create a device where you have a sensor that checks the humidity, you can also make sure uh, within the conditions to only trigger the irrigation if the soil humidity is below a certain level. Right now, the entire platform is given off uh, for free, so there is no charges involved. And as far as I know, there are no limits on the number of devices that you can create and add to your dashboard, which might be an interesting option since everyone else is charging money for if you have uh, multiple devices, including Arduino Cloud. So this could be an interesting alternative. Let me know down in the video comments if you have any questions, if you want me to show you something specific from the platform or create some specific example. I'll definitely explore it more and try to create more sensor, maybe even uh, recreate my level sensor so I can have it independent and not reliant on Home Assistant for instances where I want to give a version to a client or for instances when I want to sell this to someone or give it to a friend. If you would like to see more automation and microcontroller videos, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like the video if you like it, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.